The Howling Wolf Rocking Chair album is comprised of the singles that was recorded between 1959 and 1962 by Chess Records. The whole album was released on January 11, 1962 and is the second studio album by Howling Wolf. Even though it's a self-titled album, but because of the album cover which is done by Don S. Bronstein, it's known as Rocking Chair Album. Most songs of the album have been written by Willie Dixon, except a few that have been written by Howling Wolf himself and one song by James B. Oden. The guitarist of the songs in the album is Hubert Sumlin and Willie Dixon plays bass in the songs. Howling Wolf was born as Chester Arthur Burnett in White Station in Mississippi. In 1930, he met Charlie Patton and after a while of listening to his music, Charlie Patton started to teach him how to play guitar. Some other blues musicians that Chester Burnett was influenced by in 1930s include Blind Lemon Jefferson, Ma Rainey, Lonnie Johnson, Tampa Red, Tommy Johnson, Jimmy Rogers, and Sonny Boy Williamson too, who taught him how to play harmonica when Burnett moved to Arkansas in 1933. He also played along some other blues musicians in the South including Johnny Shines, Honey Boy Edwards, Sonny Boy Williamson too, Robert Johnson, Robert Lockwood Jr., Willie Brown, Son House, and Willie Johnson. He founded his first band in 1948 in Arkansas with two guitarists, Willie Johnson and Matt Guitar Murphy, a harmonica player, Junior Parker, a pianist with the nickname Destruction, and Willie Steele as the drummer. In 1951, Sam Phillips of Sound Studio, which at the time had a different name and was called Memphis Recording Service, heard Howling Wolf, whom was brought to him by Ike Turner, who heard him in West Memphis. Sam Phillips was impressed by how raw and soulful he sings. He licensed Howling Wolf's recording to Chess Records, and in December 1951, Leonard Chess signed a contract with Howling Wolf, and he moved to Chicago in late 1952. He recruited Jody Williams as his guitarist, but in less than a year convinced Hubert Sumlin to join him from Memphis and he remained as Howling Wolf's guitarist for the rest of his career. Howling Wolf's first album, Morning in the Moonlight, was also a collection of previously released singles, which was released in 1959. Shake For Me, like all of the other songs in the album, is a short song, which was a common trait of late 50s, early 60s singles. It was written by Willie Dixon and follows a standard 12-bar blues progression. Even though it's not one of Howling Wolf's well-known songs, probably because of its simple and standard structure, but it has a soulful guitar solo in the middle of the song, which adds a lot more power to its simple composition. In 1969, Led Zeppelin used the name of the song in the lyrics of All Lot of Love. The Red Rooster, which is widely known as Le Red Rooster, was written by Willie Dixon. It was recorded in June 1961 in Chicago and was released in October of the same year as a single. Its B-side was Shake For Me. The roots of the song can be seen in some earlier blues songs by Charlie Patton and Memphis Minnie. Charlie Patton's song was a 1929 pre-war blues called Banty Rooster Blues, and Memphis Minnie's song was a 1936 acoustic called If You See My Rooster, Please Run Him Home. Howling Wolf plays a slide guitar in the song, Willie Dixon on bass, Hubert Sumlin lead guitar, Johnny Jones on piano, Sam Lay on drums and also Jimmy Rogers on guitar. Blair Red Rooster is one of the only two songs that Howling Wolf recorded in early 60s that include his guitar playing. In 1971, Howling Wolf with Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts recorded the Red Rooster and some other songs for the album The London Howling Wolf Sessions. One of the notable versions of the song was recorded on February 23, 1963 by Sam Cooke. Even though his version is a little bit more relaxed, but it has a faster tempo. It became a hit and reached number 7 on Billboard's Hot R&B Singles chart. And it also reached number 11 on Billboard Hot 100 Pop chart. It appears on Sam Cooke's 1963 album Night Beat and several other compilations album by him. One of the other versions of the song was recorded by the Rolling Stones on either September 2, 1964 or November of the same year, and it was released on November 13, 1964 in UK as a single and on February 13, 1965 in US in the album The Rolling Stones Now. The Rolling Stones version of the song reached number one on the UK singles chart on December 5, 1964, and it's the only blues song in the history that became number one on British pop charts. 
and it was also the last cover song for the Rolling Stones as a single in 1960s. They performed Lear Red Rooster during several live performances in 1964 and 1965, and it also appeared in some of their compilations later on. The other musicians who recorded Lear Red Rooster include Luther Allison, The Doors with John Sebastian, Jose Feliciano, Grateful Dead, Ronnie Hawkins, Zizi Hill, Hubert Sumlin, and Big Mama Thornton. Holling Wolf's version of Lear Red Rooster is included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's list of 500 songs that shape rock and roll. You'll Be Mine was also written by Willie Dixon. It's an up-tempo song with a very standard blues guitar solo in the middle. Probably one of the reasons that it's not one of the Howling Wolf's well-known songs is that not only it doesn't represent any powerful feeling behind it, but also the composition is pretty simple that doesn't match the other Willie Dixon Howling Wolf contributions. Who's Been Talking is one of Howlin' Wolf's well-known songs and is one of the only two songs in this album that was written by Howlin' Wolf himself. Even though it's a very soulful and powerful song, it doesn't have a guitar solo. Instead, it has a relatively short harmonica solo in the middle. This is one of the most important songs that shows not only Howlin' Wolf was an accomplished performer, harmonica player, and guitar player, he was also a very competent and reliable songwriter as well. Wang Dang Doodle, which was written by Willie Dixon, was recorded in June 1960 and was released in 1961 as a single by Chess Records. The meaning of the words in the title of the song has been described by Willie Dixon as having a good time with a lot of dancing. He wrote this song for Howling Wolf when he first heard him in 1951 or 1952, but saved it for later. The B-side of Wang Dang Doodle is one of his other famous songs, Backdoor Man, which both alongside Spoonful were recorded in one session. Otis Spam plays piano in this song as well as Hubert Sumlin on guitar, Willie Dixon on bass, and Fred Below on drums. Several blues musicians have covered this song. One of the most notable covers have been made by Coco Taylor. Willie Dixon brought her to Chess Records on December 7, 1965 and both sang the song as a duo. During this recording session, Buddy Guy plays the guitar on the song. Coco Taylor's version of Wang Dang Doodle became a hit in 1966 and reached number 4 on Billboard R&B Singles Chart. The other important artists that have covered the song include Love Sculpture in their 1968 album Blues Helping, Savvy Brown in their 1971 album Street Corner Talking, and the Pointer Sisters on their self-titled debut album. Grateful Dead had played the song live from 1983 to 1995. Zizi Hill recorded his version in his 1982 album, The Rhythm and the Blues. Also during 1990s, PJ Harvey had performed the song live in several occasions. Little Baby was written by Willie Dixon. It's a standard blues composition with the only exception that there is no guitar or any other instrument solo in the song. Howling Wolf sings throughout the whole song except the last few seconds, without any extra time for the other instrument players to show their skills in a solo. This was not only rare at the time of recording the song, but also it's not common in general for blues songs to have vocals throughout the whole song, which makes Lil Baby unique in this way. Spoonful, one of the most well-known songs by Howling Wolf, was also written by Willie Dixon. Howling Wolf recorded the song in June 1960 and Chess Records released it in the same month. The origins of the song goes back to 1929 song by Charlie Patton called A Spoonful Blues. The other two related songs are All I Want Is A Spoonful by Papa Charlie Jackson in 1925 and Cocaine Blues by Luke Jordan in 1927. The meaning of the song has been interpreted as men's search to satisfy their emotions. Howling Wolf re-recorded Spoonful in 1968 with some session musicians and the resulting album which was called the Howling Wolf album was musically and commercially failure. He once more recorded the song in 1971 with Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts for the album The London Howling Wolf Sessions, which was successful. Among the musicians who have covered the song, Eddie James and Harvey Fuqua have a duet cover in 1961, which became a hit both on R&B and pop charts. In September 1966, Cream recorded their version of Spoonful and they released it on December 9, 1966, for their debut album Fresh Cream in UK. 
but in the US version it was substituted with I Feel Free and the ATCO Records released the song in 1967 as a two-sided single. The complete studio version was included in the album Best of Cream in 1969. Cream also played different versions of Spoonful live with adding some improvised guitar solos which one of them lasted up to 17 minutes and has been included on their 1968 album Wheels of Fire. Spoonful has been listed as one of the 500 songs that shape rock and roll in Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It also has been ranked 219 on Rolling Stone magazine's list of 500 greatest songs of all time. It's been said that the song was presented to Otis Rush but because his taste was different than Willie Dixon presented him to Howlin' Wolf. Going Down Slow was written by San Louis Jimmy and recorded in Chicago on November 11, 1941 and released in 1942 by Bluebird Records. It's one of the three songs in the album that wasn't written by Willie Dixon. Roosevelt Sykes plays piano in the original recording of the song. San Louis Jimmy, which his real name is James B. Auden, recorded several versions of the song including one in 1955 for Parrot Records and one for Bluesville Records in 1960. In the Howlin' Wolves version of the song, other than Hubert Sumlin, Jimmy Rogers also plays guitar. And Willie Dixon, other than playing bass, does a narration between Howlin' Wolves' vocal passages. This is the only song in this album that's over three minutes. In 1970, Howling Wolf re-recorded the song during the London Howling Wolf sessions with Eric Clapton and the other musicians. And in 1974, Bobby Blue Bland recorded his version as a single which reached number 17 on the R&B Billboard chart and number 69 on Billboard Hot 100 chart. Down in the Bottom is a short up-tempo blues standard that was written by Willie Dixon. It has a slide guitar solo accompanied by harmonica in the middle, and other than that, Howling Wolf's vocal is over a rhythm. It's not a well-known song, probably because nothing instrumentally or artistically in any aspect happens in the song. Backdoor Man was written by Willie Dixon and was recorded in June 1960 and released in 1961 as the B-side of the Bang Dang Doodle by Chess Records. Like most of the other songs in the album, Otis Spam plays piano, Hubert Sumlin is on guitar, Willie Dixon on double bass and Fred Below on drums, as well as Freddie King and Freddie Robinson as the second guitarists. Howling Wolf once more re-recorded the song in November 1968 for the Howling Wolf album. Several other artists have covered the song including The Doors for their self-titled debut album which they recorded in August 1966 and released it on January 4, 1967 on Elektra, and also a live version in 1970 in the album Absolutely Live. John Hammond Jr., Chicken Shack, Blues Project, Shadows of Night, Bob Weir, Quick Silver Messenger Service, and Soul Asylum also have covered the song. Willie Dixon himself recorded his version for the 1970 album I Am The Blues, and Eric Burden did a live performance of the song with Robbie Krieger in 1990 and 1991. Howling For My Darling was written by Willie Dixon. It very well matches Howling Wolf's signature style of singing. It has a standard 12-bar blues structure and most relies on Howling Wolf singing rather than instrumental solos. Even though simple blues licks can be heard throughout the whole song, but it deserves more credit and attention than it usually gets. Tell Me is the second song in the album that was written by Howling Wolf himself and that's the reason that his harmonica can be heard more than the other songs in the album. It follows a similar pattern of Billy Dixon's songwriting style and like many of his other lesser known songs doesn't represent any notable guitar soloing or any other specific feature to stand out. My rating for this album is 5 stars. All Music gave it 4.5 and Rolling Stone and Encyclopedia of Popular Music both gave the album 5 stars, which it deserves it based on the fact that many of the powerful and notable Willie Dixon and Howling Wolf songs have been included in this album.